Hi everyone, Ronnie here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to reprogram the Touchy board uh, via the built-in serial bootloader. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken an STDI cable uh, and stripped the connector from the cables themselves, and I left the crimped uh, on the actual cables because I am actually planning to reuse that same connector. Uh, I'm not really wanting to actually use this setup permanently. Now, um, you could, uh, buy any serial cable that you want to. Just bear in mind that when you buy an FDI cable or any serial cables in, uh, for that matter, make sure you buy one to have the, uh, the, 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 TL line, the TTL lines at 3.3 volts. Because you can actually buy the same cable at 5 volts and I believe that will actually cause damage to the microcontroller. Uh, and you can get the RS232, RS232 standard, which again can damage the chip. Uh, so again, just make sure when you come and buy the microcontroller to actually buy the 3.3 version um, or possibly savage an Arduino and strip it apart and use that if you want to. Now we're not actually using any of the other signals on the FTDI cables, we're only using the TX and RX. Uh, in this case the TX is the orange line and the RX is the white line and the black is ground. Now I'm not actually going to be powering this board directly to my power supply, I'm actually going to be using the wash battery um, just to make things easier and a little cleaner for this video anyway. Uh, so that said, um, my board is already on bootloader mode, so if you've bought the board for the first time and just finished soldering it, uh, your board should be ready to be loaded with the first program. So you don't need to do anything, uh, well you don't need to do anything special other than just connecting your serial cable and just powering it up. And basically the, all the lights. Uh, the project files that I'm using is all in my repo, uh, my hash electronics repo on GitHub. And the project is the Touchy Firmware repo, so BC is for Ballport Club. Um, in this project files, I mean, you can download it or clone it, depending on what you want to do. But on this project folder, we've got the, uh, the actual project files that you need if you want to develop the code or maybe expand from what I'm using, which is on the simple folder. But I already pre-compiled the code uh, both as a hex and a EFM8 type which is what the bootloader is expecting, or at least the program for the bootloader is expecting, I should say. Um, and I've also gone ahead and actually added the host software provided by Scilabs, uh, which is what we're gonna be using today to program the board. Uh, so go ahead and copy that or clone it. Um, I've gone and copied that into my C drive just to make things a little easier, uh, at least for myself anyway. Now, if you're using Windows, you need to open um, uh, the, uh, the CMD uh, program. Okay, so what you need to do is change the directory to the BC Touchy firmware. So it will be BC firmware. And in here we've got the bootloader hex and so on. Okay, so now that you this directory, this is the program you need to run on the command line. We need to give a couple of parameters, but this is the one that you need to uh, execute. So it'll be bootloader tools, Windows and it will be the EFM8 load.exe. So it will be uh, so backslash bootloader tools windows uh, EFM.load. Now we need to give it a couple of parameters. The first one I'm going to give it is going to be the port we're going to be using. Uh, so if you're in Windows, uh, it will be this one here. So for me, my FTDI cable. Um, initialized with the COM12, so it will be space uh, COM12. And then now we need to give it the final parameter, which is the uh, hex we're gonna use, sorry, the pre the converted hex that we're gonna use. And that is going to be the one in the hex folder, well, at least the one for this video. It'll be the simple.efm8. Now, the hex file uh, has been converted into an EFM8, and I'll show that in a second how to do that uh, out of a, um, well, just so that to make sure you can do that for your own project if you want to do that. But for the time being, we'll do it on that. And so because we're still in the uh, BC Touchy firmware, it will be dot forward slash hex forward slash uh, simple dot uh, EFM, is it? Yeah. Eight. Uh, did I spell that right? Dot EFM, okay. Eight. Now, if I'll just turn the cam back on. So right now, it should still be in the bootloader. I can touch the, the board and it shouldn't really do anything. Now, the one thing I wanna point out is that the board, once it's been programmed by the bootloader, this is a good time to show you how to put the trace on, which would be uh, hyphen T. 
Okay, there we go, it's done it. Okay, so that's done. Um, the issue with the bootloader, at least it's not an issue, it's, it's actually a normal thing to do. Uh, the bootloader actually goes ahead and, run, and goes straight into the main program. It starts executing then, and that's fine. Uh, it can be a bit annoying if you if you loaded the wrong uh, firmware by mistake and you want to redo it again, you have to, kind of have to go for the process of resetting the bootloader. And I'll show you in a second how to do that. But now that it's done that, you should be able to touch the board and actually get the program to run. So, so in this case, I mean, I know that it's, it's running, so that's that's fine. Um, but if you want to re reprogram the board, uh, we need to put this back into bootloader mode. And the way to do that is, unfortunately for my setup, is we'll need to take off the battery. And I'm just going to use this uh, micro hook here for that. And all I'm really doing is just shoving the uh, the micro hook in there just to kind of slide out the battery. When I came to solder the board, I put a little bit too much solder in the middle pad that touches the negative part of the watch. So it's a bit harder for me to take it out than usual, but it's not a problem now. And the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure you take off the TX line, which is the orange cable. Uh, it's always it's, it's active high, and that's just enough power in there uh, to provide enough parasitic power to turn on the micro. Uh, so if you're trying to put it into bootloader mode, you'll probably find that it's not going to do a good job. So the next thing you need to do is you need to put the, if you're using like a micro hook cable or maybe some spare wire they have laying around, you need to short the third pin to ground. So from third from bottom. And that is actually the reset line. Uh, sorry, not the reset line. That is the, the data line for the programmer, uh, which is port 2.7. When the bootloader powers up for the first time, he checks that pin. And if that pin has been put till it's been grounded, it's going to assume you want to go into bootloader and it stays in bootloader mode when it does that. So the next thing you do is you make sure you put the power before the TX, the RX line, uh, sorry, the TX line of the FTDI cable. The reason being is because I don't think there's enough power in there uh, to keep the micro uh, running. And so you kind of, you can kind of see it if you've got your program running, you kind of see a very dim, flickery light, and it seems like it's, re it's resetting all the time. So, okay, so I put the watch, top, uh, the watch battery back in there. That pin is fine, that's us grinding that uh, that line and the LEDs are driven low to turn on, so it's not a problem. You can go ahead now and remove the reset cable and we can put the TX line back on, making sure we don't short that. Okay, and you can tell that it's on bootloader mode because again, you can touch all the pads and it's not gonna do anything. If you go back into the screen here, we can rerun that command and this time choose a different firmware if you want to. Let's take off the trace and go ahead and click that, and that should do the job. Now, that's what we expect, really. Okay, so that's programmed. Again, you can run that, and you can see that. Okay, so I've shown you how to do that. The, the final step to show you is, well, really, it should have been the first step, but I kind of wanted to get to the good bit, uh, is converting hex to EFM8. And the way you do that is we have a third program, sorry, a second program that can't, that Scilabs uh, have given us, which is in the Windows folder and that is the hex to boot.exe. Now, what we need to do is we need to execute this program, give it the uh, file, the hex file we wanna convert and tell it where we wanna uh, put that in. So the way we do that is dot for uh, backslash uh, bootloader tools windows and it's gonna be hex to, yep, yeah, that's the one. We give it. We need to give it the uh, file we're going to convert, and that's going to be again hex um, forward slash uh, simple dot hex. Oh. And then we're going to give it a parameter. Now the O is for output, and we can go ahead and basically we can output anywhere we want to. But I'm just going to put it back in here where this one, this one was located. So I was mistaken there. Hang on, take a step back. The one I want to delete is this one here, <laughs> not the actual program we want to use. All right, so now again, I'm just going to tell it where we want it. So I want it on the hex and we want it there and we're going to go ahead and call it EFM8. Now I'm only, to be, I don't think the extension is making a difference. Uh, I call it e, the EFM8 because that's what the instructions were for this, uh, for this document. So. Anyway, so if you run that, it should only take a few seconds anyway. And you can see it there. And it's done that, yeah. And there's that program right there. It's not a problem, that's fine. Okay, and if we want to, we can put the board back into bootloader and run that. But that's it really, I really, ideally the way you need to do this, you need to is compile your hex and then stick that hex, well, whatever you want to store really, 
convert that to the boot file, which in this case we've named uh, simple.efm8. And then we can then use the, um, the uh, EFM loader, uh, where is it, boot loader? No, that's another one. Tools, Windows. We can then use the EFM load, load to load the program to the firmware now. Now, that said, if you're feeling sociable, you can find me on Twitter, both at Optical Worms or Hatch Funny Leg. See you later. Bye.